Okay guys, welcome to Anxiety Disorders. So here we're going to talk about the anxiety disorders in depth and we're also going to talk a lot about the pharmacology behind it. So download the lecture slides on your computer and go along with me, it's going to be much easier. And I acknowledge this is all adapted from the CPS. Disorders are the most prevalent psychiatric illness and women seem to have a higher prevalence when compared to men. What are some risk factors, okay? so? Family or personal history of trauma is particularly aggravated by substance abuse and depression. Okay, so remember that. Anxiety disorders are actually a different category from depression. So it's not one size fits all. You have to go by a cat each category. Investigations, okay? So people who have more than one anxiety disorder, you treat each disorder separately, okay? You don't lump them all together. Validated scales can be useful for detection and gaining objective information to help form cognitive decisions. So we got the PDS that tells that useful for evaluating panic disorder. We have the HAMA, Hamilton Anxiety Scale, which is great for generalized anxiety disorder. We have the Leovitz Social Anxiety Scale, which is good for social anxiety disorder. Okay, so do a physical examination as well to rule out what's actually happening, okay? Because a lot of the times, if an individual has hypothyroidism, low iron levels, low vitamin B12 levels, for example, they can mimic depressive symptoms, okay? So we have to rule out, is it a physical problem? Is it depression-like symptoms secondary to a deficiency in the uh, essential mineral or something that the body needs? So really tease that out, okay? I don't think enough clinicians do this, so I find that very important. DSM-5 classification of anxiety disorders, okay? So this is from DSM-5, and I don't think it's gonna to be too, too useful for the pharmacist, but I included it here for the med call, or for our medical colleagues. So it's right here for your information, it's in the slides. So if you wanna go through that, uh, you feel free to take a look on your own time. It is for you, but I'm not gonna go really over it because I don't think it's gonna be tested. But Furthermore, it is useful, so you can give it a read if you're interested, or if it does help you understand the concepts better, okay? Okay, so interview. You're gonna screen anxiety symptoms, okay? So this is a good one when assessing for an individual that may have anxiety. So during the past two weeks, how much have you been bothered by the following issues? So feeling nervous, anxious, frightened, worried, or on edge, feeling panic or being frightened, and have you been avoiding situations that make you feel nervous? Okay, these are very important questions to ask. What are some non-farm choices? Guys, we gotta go through non-farm because I don't know if you know, but like 25 to 35% of the pharmaceutical board exam is based on non-farm, so it's something we should probably be familiar with. Okay, so psychotherapy, cognitive-based therapy, exposure therapy, mindfulness-based therapy, Relaxation methods, as well as just managing your time in terms of skills, these go, go a long way too. Aerobic activity a few times a week. We know, come on, what does a long run not cure? It's pretty good for us. Avoid alcohol and caffeine. So, just a brief overview of the pharmacological choices, okay? So, SSRIs and SNRIs are preferred over tricyclic antidepressants and monooxidase inhibitors, okay, so MOAIs. Dosing, make sure to titrate the dose every one to two weeks until this typical dose for depression has been reached. The optimal dose can take 12 or more weeks. So when I'm counseling a lot of patients in community, I say, guys, you know, starting this new antidepressant for your anxiety, make sure that you're not expecting results, you know, in the first week because a lot of these cases, the medication is going to take some time to work and often it can make your mood worse before it gets better. Okay, so very important counseling point. Uh, one, after the optimal dose is reached, the patient should continue for at least one to two years, okay? For discontinuing, this is really important, okay? Taper slowly over several months. A lot of clinicians, unfortunately, just stop cold turkey, which is not good. And that can actually make someone who has anxiety disorder like really relapse into a bad state. So make sure if someone wants to come off that you're tapering it very slowly, okay? Benzodiazepines, they're not really used that much in anxiety disorders, but they're good for the first little bit. So this is gonna make sense based off what I just said about 
When you're starting an SSRI or SNRI, antidepressant, you might feel a bit worse at the beginning. So while we're waiting for that lag period until the medication kicks in, having a benzo might be okay. Just if there's intense panic, that might help calm them down. In the initial phase of treatment though, it should not be continued. So, panic disorder and agoraphobia. So here how my slides go. I give a brief little intro and then we're going to go in depth into the pharmacology, okay? So I really like it because I think giving you guys the preview, you know, your brain starts to learn a little bit about it and then we go in depth, it makes it a lot easier to synthesize and understand the concepts, okay? So that double repetition here, so brief exposure, long exposure, I think goes well for learning. But make sure you guys leave some comments and let me know how it actually works because I'm just spectating here, right? First line. SSRIs and SNRIs, second line, tricyclic antidepressants, mirtazapine, benzodiazepines, third line, second generation antipsychotics, so got like risperidone, olanzapine, ketiapine, epiprazole, or abilify. Social anxiety disorder, okay, so first line here as well, SNRIs and SSRIs, and high doses of pregabalin, which is interesting, okay. Second line, phenylazine, gabapentin, benzos, like clonazepam and romazepam. Third line are second generation antipsychotics, beta blockers, so this might be good here if someone has a public speaking event. So someone has social anxiety disorder and they have to give a talk about, you know, the firefighters conventions of Ohio, maybe giving a benzo before that event to let them relax and then really get them into public speaking, that might be pretty beneficial here, okay? Specific phobia, okay? So let's say we have a guy that's scared of spiders and snakes, okay? Exposure therapy is in meat and potatoes in this case. It doesn't really require pharmacological therapy, but if an individual knows that he's gonna face something, so let's say you have a guy that's really scared of snakes and he's going to the zoo, he knows he's going to the zoo, a benzo might be warranted in that case. Generalized anxiety disorder, okay? So CBT is probably the most effective measure in this, but it can take more than 20 sessions, okay? So that's a disadvantage. What's the first line, okay? SNRIs and SSRIs, pregabalin can also give a positive effect within one week. Second line, ketiapine, bupropion, benzos. Third line, mirtazapine, so add-on therapy if the other toxins are not effective. Second generation antipsychotic refractory, pregabalin. Remember guys, it's just a brief intro to the concept, then we're gonna really dig in. So if you're thinking I'm speaking another language, it's okay. Choices during pregnancy, okay? So anxiety disorders in pregnancy, we need to treat it because associated with depression, substance abuse, uh, more like, you know, stress, which is obviously gonna harm the fetus, as well as it's associated with decreased uh, compliance so the mother will not take her vitamins. And obviously parental skills might be affected in a very bad way, right? If the mother is struggling with anxiety disorder while pregnant. So, how do we manage anxiety disorders while pregnant, okay? So, first line, cognitive behavioral therapy and interpersonal therapy, right? We want limited drug interventions here, so if we can do non-pharm, great, but if the woman does have severe symptoms, looking to pharmacotherapy, so if she was on antidepressant before pregnant, you can usually continue at the same dose, but if the anxiety starts during pregnancy, what can we treat it with? Acronym here, so you should have in the notes, SET. Okay, so like straight down for you, better quick. So, set. So, telegram, SF telegram, sit telegram, okay? You should have your notes, but you get one here too, you can see. Uh, make sure you're avoiding paroxetine in all stages of pregnancy and benzodiazepine, especially in the first semester, but I'll probably say benzos should not be used for pregnancy. Anxiety disorders and breastfeeding, okay? So, benzos are a no no because they can actually cross over and cause sedation in the infant, okay? Consider if the mother has anxiety during the postpartum period, consider the use of paroxetine and surgery, okay? These are important here. Sorry, all you guys have a brief intro. What are some tips in the summary, okay? So, Short-term interventions can work if anxiety is not severe. Using benzos and the first stage of treatment of antidepressants is beneficial and it can be good. If a patient arguments or has a response to a first line, but it's not as good, so it's like a 40 to 50% response, you can add another first line agent as treatment, okay? Okay, so anxiety disorder, so pharmacology. So I'm pretty nitpicky on side effects because in my time during pharmacy school I remember cramming these slides and I would see a, you know, a slide with like 10 different side effects and I would think you know the prof can't be that much of an ass he's not going to test it 
they test very specific side effects. So I've made mnemonics for you guys to just memorize side effects. I think once you guys understand the mechanism of action, which I also include here, plus the mnemonic, you guys will be good to go and you guys have a pretty good understanding of side effects, that's why I do it. Uh, also too, right, it's not just for the guys in final year of pharmacy, it's any year. So, you know, let's say you want some extra supplementation or you want to review for your class, these videos are for you too. And if you're in pharmacy school, you probably will have to know all the side effects, okay? Okay, so let's go antipsychotics, the second generation ketiapine, alright? So we saw the use in general anxiety disorder, dosage 50 to 150 milligrams. Interaction, right? So ketiapine is a CYP3 and 4 metabolite with additive effects with other CNS depressants like alcohol. Mechanism of action, okay? So it's an antagonist at the D2 receptors and serotonin 5HT2A receptors to reduce overactivity and help calm the mind. Acronyms here, okay? So let's write it down and you guys can see. Okay, so CNS, a lot of CNS ones, okay? So chub, constipation, headache, urinary tension. So I think chub is actually a good one here. I'm just going to the acronym just because we're ready. So pretty good. And then President Donald DC, so PDDC, psychomotor impairment, drowsiness, dry mouth, cognitive impairment. Okay, so then we got DPOT, so cardiovascular DPOT, so Detroit pot, a lot of post postmodes in Detroit. DPOT, dizziness, palpitations, orthostatic hypertension, tachycardia. Remember guys, I think the biggest thing they're going to ask is weight gain. So when you guys remember chub for ketiapine, makes sense with weight gain, okay? So just remember that, okay? It's going to save you a lot in the long run. Okay, so azoprone, brisperone, this is sometimes used to generalize anxiety disorder. Uh, you guys, dose is more so for information, be generally familiar, I'm not going to ask you specific doses for these ones, for the other ones, which they will ask, like infections and antibiotics, we'll go through those in depth. Interaction, so it's metabolized by CYP3A4, avoid MAOIs, so this is a tip, MAOIs, literally, they're like that angry, you know, angry person that fights with everyone and they interact with almost every drug, so Antidepressants, for most antidepressants, the use of an MAOI is contraindicated, okay? Mechanism of action, so it's a partial serotonin receptor agonist and also influences dopaminergic receptors without giving too much of a response, okay? So, side effects, F-hand, okay? So, busperone, F-H-A-N-D, okay? So, I know you got fat hand. Fatigue, headache, agitation, nausea, and dizziness, okay? Benzodiazepines, okay? So this one's interesting. So we got clonazepam and lorazepam. Uh, in terms of indications, I wouldn't really stress on that too, too much. But what's interesting here is that you can see in the, if you guys are following on the slides, you can see that clonazepam is used for social anxiety disorder while lorazepam is not. The reason why is that Clonazepam will not cause as much drowsiness as lorazepam. Okay, so lorazepam has much more affinity for the GABA A receptor than clonazepam, so it's going to just put you to sleep. All right? They're saying clonazepam is okay for you as socially anxious individuals because it'll give a calming effect, but not too sedative because it doesn't bind to the GABA A receptors with hardcore affinity. Okay. So, and I hope you guys can see the slides, you guys can see Brad Pitt here, so benzodiazepines, both, okay, so these ones are like all CNS related, okay, so why I put Brad Pitt will make sense in a second, I promise you, so cramp, 
C R A M P. This kind of weird one because there's no words. F P D R D. Okay. Okay, so Frank punched David right down. Okay, that's why I put Brad Pitt here. Uh, so cramps, CRAMP, confusion, reduced concentration, ataxia, muscle weakness, psychomotor impairment. Frank punched David right down. Fatigue, paradoxical agitation, drowsiness, retrograde amnesia, dysrhythmia. Other notes, so there's some abuse, addiction, and withdrawal, right? Taking these, so to avoid, make sure you're tapering. The dose, and this is an important one to probably ask for sure. Older people are really, really prone to side effects from benzodiazepines. So it's a no-no in older individuals. Try to substitute with something else, okay? Okay, like we said, beta-1 adrenergic antagonists. So it's good for specific tasks, anxiety. So we talked about the antisocial social anxiety disorder individual. Has to make a speech. He is just traumatized, he's super scared. A benzo can work, or sorry, a beta blocker can work in this case. So what is side effects, bradycardia and hypotension? Okay, gabapentin, okay, so gabapentin, used in social anxiety disorder. Uh, doses can go from 300 milligrams to 360 milligrams. pre gabalin we saw, used in social anxiety disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. It was actually first line in uh, social anxiety disorder, so you may need more than 600 milligrams, however. Okay, so let's talk about side effects. Okay. Okay, so both, I like Bill Gates here because the side effects I did were both paid the diff. Okay, Bill Gates is rich, so he can pay difference so peripheral edema, ataxia, impaired coordination, drowsiness, dizziness, impaired vision and fatigue, pre gabalin exclusively, okay? So I don't know if you guys know this, but darts, so D are another name for smoking, and I think they cause hypertension, okay? So darts, arrow, HTN for hypertension, dry mouth, headache, tremors, and nausea. Okay, so SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So what are the MA? From the name, you guys probably infer they inhibit the reuptake of serotonin. Just dosing guys for your interest. General notes, okay, so again I put the dosing as well. Slide a little bit nicer. Okay, so Side effects, okay? Let's look at side effects here. So, I did this because it was interesting. I found this a lot of side effects, but I'm going to kind of emphasize what you know, okay? So, SSRIs, I am, arrow A, A, H, like ah, uh, okay? Okay, so, ser selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, okay? So, side effects, I am, ah, uh, A, A, H, insects, mummies, make someone scared. It's over here, okay? So, Insomnia, movements, anxiety, agitation, headache. Others like GI effects, right? So nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation. Uh, they you know increase the risk of upper GI bleeding. Others so DIS, D-I-S-S, so dry mouth and appropriate eighty-eight secretion, sweating, sexual dysfunction, and QTC prolongation, which we discussed on later slides. Okay, so specific SSRIs. Okay, so. Escitalopram and citalopram are pretty good because they are pretty specific. They don't inhibit as much of enzymes, but they're known at prolonging the QTC interval. This is very important to remember that, okay? Fluoxetine and proxen are both CYP2D6 inhibitors, so fluoxetine is more stimulating, has a higher risk of sexual dysfunction. Proxetine, more commonly associated with sexual issues. Uh, sedation, anticholinergic issues, and weight gain. Fluoxamine, CYP1A2 inhibitors, sedating and has high risk of GI issues. Sertraline is stimulating, so make sure you guys take with meals better absorption. Uh, if you guys are writing a like a midterm or a final and you're taking this class, like mental health thing in the pharmacy, uh, these will probably be questions, okay? They're pretty unique and they basically want to tell you what SSRI would you give with some, right? So, 
If you have someone that comes in and says, hey, I want to start an antidepressant for my anxiety, but I don't want weight gain, it's like, which would you not prescribe? Hopefully you guys, from you know, rereading this and just showing you guys prox team, right? So just know this inside out. It's pretty commonly tested. Just some general notes on SSRIs. Okay, they all work on the liver. Uh, as we know, they increase serotonin, so serotonin syndrome can occur with the drugs DMAT. I wrote running out of room. DMATS, okay, DORMATS, D hyphen M-A-T-S. So these drugs are dextromatorphan, mepiridine, amphetamines, tryptophan, St. John's worth, uh, St. John's worth. Make sure you know this, okay, another high yield concept, NSAIDs can increase the risk of GI bleed when you're taking SSRI, okay? So that could be an issue, right? Let's say someone's taking naproxen with sertraline, might be a bit of a no-no. Uh, like I emphasized before, SSRIs can prolong the QTC, but escitalopram and citalopram have the most potential. Okay, so uh, in terms of SNRIs, okay, so serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. So mechanisms of action, they inhibit norepinephrine and serotonin. Uh, just some notes, duloxine metabolized by CYP1A2 and CYP2D6. Then the faxine metabolized by CYP2D6 and CYP3A4. Uh, both, so these are the drugs that are used in like anxiety disorders. They're both you know, weak to average CYP2D6 inhibitors that you guys probably see by the slides. Same side effects, okay? So this is pretty interesting. I don't know if they'll test this, but it's a, it is a very possible question, especially if you guys are running a midterm. So, SNRIs are more likely to cause cardiovascular effects, okay? So I made the acronym HOT. So let's go, uh, in a room, SNRI, H-O-T, okay, for C-V. So it's hypertension, orthostatic hypotension, and tachycardia. So what are some general notes for SNRIs, okay? Like we said, Similar to SSRIs, but make sure you monitor your blood pressure and heart rate because we just talked about the cardiovascular effects. Once a week during the first month of treatment. Okay, try taking the antidepressants. These ones are not, they're not used as much, right? We talked about before because a lot more side effects, SSRIs and SNRIs are much preferred, but we can go through them. So, these guys primarily block norepinephrine or serotonin but they can also affect the cholinergic and the histaminergic systems too. Why they cause a lot of side effects, right? So this one right over, let's do here, okay? As you can see, TCA sides. So HD maps, okay? So like T for Toronto, Toronto you need HD maps, HD M-A-P-S. Headache, drowsiness, myoclonus, agitation, psychomotor impairment, and seizure, anticholinergic effects, okay, B, C, B, U, D, so if you guys are in Canada, B, C has apparently good weed, buzz on a term for weed, so uh, B, C, B, U, D, blurred vision, constipation, brain impairment, urinary retention, dry mouth, C, V, okay, so cardiovascular, adopt, Q, so I don't know, adopt Quintin, adopt word Q A D O P T Q, Quintin's a common name. Birth experience, dizziness, or static hypertension, palpitations, QTC prolongations, others, W I S, so it's actually a word in English, weight gain, increased appetite, sexual dysfunction, okay? Okay, so some general notes here, okay? Tricyclic antidepressants are all metabolized by the liver. They're all CYP2D6 inhibitors. CYP2D6 and CYP3A4 inducers may decrease effectiveness. Of course, avoid MAOIs. Just know that in general, avoid MAOIs with other, most other antidepressants. Um, as we saw, they can cause drowsiness, so avoid with alcohol and some other like drugs that work on the cholinergic system. Caution, so people with cardiovascular disease, cognitive issues, and seizures. Uh, T tricyclic antidepressants can like reduce the threshold for seizures and contraindicating suicidality. Okay, so 
make sure that you guys understand that once you guys know like the mechanisms of action, the side effects, all this stuff become pre stuff becomes pretty easy. Okay, so acronyms or whatnot, please. I really appreciate you guys' feedbacks. So like, comment, uh, subscribe. Again, download those notes. They're totally free for you guys. Uh, pass a message around, and so I plan to bridge meant to get all the mental health done in the next couple weeks. So what's coming next? With ADHD, and then uh, depression. And then we got alcohol, opioid, and tobacco, all separate lectures, disorders, okay? So, final lecture's coming up. Thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you guys think. Please like, comment, subscribe. It helps the algorithm. And I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time.